trying out a new uh, BB cream instead of my regular makeup. It's later than I like. There's something in my eye. My camera is giving me notifications that I've never seen before. And I actually enjoy this episode of Beast Morphers. So let's just, let's just realize we're in the twilight zone. Hi, I am apparently a ghost today. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Brit, and if you haven't subscribed yet, you probably should because I talk about geeky things. And today we're gonna do another episode review of Beast Morphers. So let's just let's just jump into it. If you guys don't want any spoilers for the episode and enjoy the episode for yourself, click to this timestamp, and that will take you to my thoughts on this episode of Beast Morphers, which surprised even me. So this episode of Beast Morphers opens up with Ravi wanting to work on his saber. In all reality, he wants to have the lab to himself so that he can paint the real Roxy uh, in secret because obviously nobody knows that he is an artist yet. We know. We know as an audience. We found out a few episodes ago, but nobody else knows yet. And he wants to keep that a secret. Smash uh, ends up walking up behind him and seeing him do his art. And he mentions it to Ravi. And so Ravi kind of freaks out turns him off and erases part of his memory so that there was no memory of Ravi doing any kind of art. Uh, so when Ravi leaves and Smash wakes back up, um, he has this really weird urge to paint. And so he begins to paint everything. And Ben and Betty find him painting a mural outside where he's not supposed to really go. He's supposed to get permission to go outside and he didn't get said permission to go outside. So they're trying to get him to go back inside so that he doesn't really raise too much alertness. The fact that he is there and yeah, there's Ben and Betty. So the other Rangers find him and are concerned about the same thing. Ravi kind of gets an idea of what's going on already, but then a monster attacks. And so the Rangers morph, they fight the monster. Roxy and Blaze also stop by to do some fighting. And the monster actually ends up trying to steal Smash. And so Devin and Ravi go to save Smash. They're able to save him. Ravi takes Smash off into the wild blue yonder, actually just to a warehouse where they're trying to hide out from the monster, but the monster follows them. And so Ravi decides to go and defend his beast robot. What are they called? Beast bot. That's what they're called. <laughs> Forget really weird random things all the time. It's fine. It's just my memory. This monster ends up with this like propelling power, which basically is a fan on him that turns on and it becomes this just huge amount of wind. And so Ravi goes to try and stop the monster. Smash comes and defends him, standing in front of him so that Ravi would be able to withstand the wind a little bit easier. And he's able to shoot the monster and get rid of this fan. He's also able to destroy the monster and everything is good, right? No, of course not. We're still only like, we at this point, I don't even think have seen the opening theme, but we all know that the opening theme comes almost halfway through the freaking episode. So we jump to our villain Scrozzle, uh, or our lackey Scrozzle, who has now finished the upgrade. The powers that he has been slowly stealing from the Rangers, at least the first three, and has completed this upgrade that was promised to Roxy and or Blaze uh, at some point by Evox. Vargoyle is looking for the Fury Cells, and of course, there are none left, so. Uh-oh. So that's when Blaze and Roxy walk in, and of course, Razzle blames them for losing the Fury Cells. And this is kind of where I'm realizing that Roxy and Blaze are starting to realize that they're not really gonna be in good company with Evox and Scrozzle. So it'll be interesting to see what happens next. This is when Evox shows up and he learns that Vargoyle was actually a creation of Scrozzles. And so he says, you can have the upgrade if you help me steal some more effects. And so he agrees. This really angers 
Roxy and Blaze. They were promised the upgrade. But then Evox reminds them that he actually promised the upgrade to his strongest warrior. And they have proven time and time again that they are not his strongest warrior. Neither one of them because they keep losing to the Power Rangers. Once back at the lab, Nate realizes that uh, Smash's systems are corrupted. And so he's trying to figure out who would have corrupted them and thinking, of course, I'm sure that it was probably somebody evil. But then this is when Ravi decides to come clean about the fact that he's the one who corrupted the files and comes clean about being an artist and shows them the painting that he was doing of the real Roxy and they were all just incredibly impressed and also kind of upset that they that he kept such an important secret from them but because of the way his mother reacts around art he just didn't want anybody to know that he was truly an artist and that's what he wanted and I don't know, I feel really bad for Ravi. This is when the Rangers are uh, told that there is a break-in at one of the Morphex warehouses. So they head on over there and they find Vargoyle stealing some Morphex. And so they decide to attack him and he is acting like he doesn't want to fight. Like he's actually like scared of them and acting like he's super weak and tells Scrozzle to help him out. So Scrozzle sends a Giga Drone out but because the be, but because of the fact that Smash's systems are corrupted, they can't call the Megazord. They can't call that Zord. So Devin has to go out by himself to go fight. When he realizes the Giga Drone is actually airborne, he asks for Zoe's help. Well, obviously, nobody else really needs to be fighting this monster because this monster, <laughs> this Vargoyle, is a weak monster, and nobody needs to be helping the rest of them fight. So she leaves to go and help. Her time in the battle really doesn't last very long because she's blown away. And so realizing that maybe an airstrike was not the best option, Nate is able to fix Smash. And so Smash is able to go and call out the Zord for Ravi. And so Ravi heads out, leaving Steel completely alone with Vargoyle. And this is where Vargoyle starts showing his true colors and trying to destroy Steel and nearly does it to the point that Steel actually demorphs during the middle of the fight. The Rangers are obviously able to defeat the Giga Drone and the episode ends up ending kind of with two different scenes. One of which is Vargoyle getting this upgrade Blaze and Roxy deciding that they need to work together to stop Vargoyle. And of course we end with the Rangers. The Rangers and Ben and Betty, other than Ravi, are repainting or cleaning up the mess that Smash did. Smash and Ravi are chatting a little bit and he apologizes to Smash for messing with his system. And then Smash tells him he's actually known about Ravi's art for a very long time. And that was when Ravi realized that he should have trusted Smash from the beginning, that these B-spots are there to help and protect them. And Smash would never do something that would purposely put him in danger and, or in, get him in trouble. And so Ravi realizes that he made a huge mistake in not trusting Smash from the beginning and that he promises to trust Smash going forward. So there you go. There you have it. That is the episode synopsis of Beast Morphers episode 17 gorilla art and uh it was a good episode i actually i don't have anything like specific to talk about that was good it just was all in all a pretty good episode there wasn't a ton about the episode that i just thought was overall bad i thought it was actually pretty good there are some critiques however because i still look at it as a director i still look at it as a film critic i still look at it as a screenwriter and there are always going to be problems Something that I think would have been a really cool storyline would have been, and it would have actually worked, because I actually wrote down kind of uh, with the idea that I was going to get rid of it, because depending on what the Sentai looked like, and for me it's really hard these days to know what's Sentai and what's not. Back 10 years ago, it was easy for me to tell. It was still a little bit harder than it was 20 years ago, but it was still kind of easy. But at this point, it's really hard, because everybody's using digital HD at this point. So it's really hard to actually indicate what is Sentai and what isn't anymore. And hopefully I'll get better at it with these newer seasons. I remember back when I was watching like SPD and Mystic Force, I felt like it was really hard back then. But now that I'm watching the new stuff and going back and watching those, I'm realizing it's actually kind of easy to figure it out. So hopefully I'll be able to figure out eventually. But I figured what the Sentai would show 
would have been something similar to what we were seeing in the American show, but it wasn't at all. It would have been interesting for Ravi to not know enough on how to erase just a few minutes of Smash's memory and actually erase all of Smash's memory. I think that would have been a much more interesting storyline than having Smash go out and paint everything. But at the same time, they still could have had that story um, and erased his entire memory. But I think that that would have been an interesting kind of idea and actually put a little bit more emphasis on Ravi being guilty about what happened because obviously like he misses his friendship with Smash. I think that would have been a very interesting storyline and not that the way they went about it was wrong, but I think personally I would have enjoyed the entire memory wipe versus a partial memory wipe. This one gets to me anytime I see something like this. It just drives me, drives me bonkers. It drives me bonkers, you guys. At least I still drink wine in this Twilight Zone, in this parallel universe we're in. So, <sighs> yelling. This is going to be the director's fault more than it's going to be the actor's fault, but I do put a little bit, bit of bit, but I do put a little bit of blame on the actor as well, but this is mostly a directing issue that I have. When Ravi was facing the monster with the wind, he was whispering sometimes and he was talking normally. I'm sorry, when there is a ridiculous amount of wind, there is yelling. So as the voice director, I would have been like, no, 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 Jazz, you need to give me like a real yell. You need to be yelling your lines. You need to be like talking over this ridiculous wind. You have to be yelling. But he didn't. He was talking normally. He was whispering sometimes. It was not okay. And uh, Smash was able to hear him perfectly well. And that would not have happened if Robbie's character was not yelling, was talking like that with the wind. He needed to be yelling. And it. this is something that drives me crazy when there's a lot of wind in a movie or a television show and the actors are just talking like it's normal. That's not how it works. You have to be yelling. You have to actually match the universe that you're in, match the situation that you're in, and that is not matching the situation you're in. And it drives me bonkers whenever I see that because it's just like, it throws me out because it's not realistic and it just throws me right the heck out. And he should have been yelling. As a director, I would have told him that. So Hasbro was fine. If you don't want to hire me as a showrunner, I get it. At least can I direct? the episodes because I think I do really really well at directing them and I would tell the actors to yell. <laughs> In the scene where Evox promises the upgrade to Vargoyle, um, Blaze is already looking at Evox but it's weird and, and mind you like I think this actress is probably one of the standard actors of this season so take this with a grain of salt. This was obviously just an issue with editing or it was an issue with directing. I really don't think this was her reacting. But if it was, I mean, I do have to call her on it. Part of acting, half of acting is reacting. It's not just saying your lines, it's also being present when other lines are being spoken and reacting to them naturally. So if somebody says something shocking, you don't just sit there and go. And unfortunately you see that a lot in Saban seasons of Power Rangers because Saban never gives a crap about acting. Um, matter of fact, Tony told me a really funny story then this was actually Shuki back in Zeo with the Gold Ranger, with the original Gold Ranger Trey. Um, <laughs> they just, he just found triplets that were attractive on the beach and uh, didn't care if they could act or not. Couldn't, didn't even care if they had a speech impediment or not. Uh, so when they had a speech impediment that could not be made out well on uh, through the microphones, they actually had to dub, dub over the actors um, with a different voice. So yeah, this is a running theme in Power Rangers, but I really don't think this is La uh, Liana's fault entirely. I think this was an editing problem. But so she's kind of staring off, like star I think she's looking at Scrozzle and Vargoyle, and then she hears Evox. So Evox talks about giving the... Um, upgrade to Vargoyle and she's just like, oh, okay, yeah, what? Like it was a very weird delayed reaction and not like a delayed reaction, like it finally hit her and she looked. It was quite literally like she just heard it and looked. So it just was a very delayed reaction. And like I said, that could have been an editing problem. That could have been a directing problem. It could have been 
um, an acting problem, or it could have been all of all three. But again, I think Liana is one of the big standout actors from this season, so I really don't think that it was really her acting that was mostly at fault. I think it was definitely probably the editing of putting the dub in, or the, you know, the voiceover stuff in to that shot and having her turn just too late. And that should have been caught by the director, it should have been caught by the editor, but it wasn't, so that's what we have. So there you guys have it, my thoughts on this episode of Beast Morphers. What did you guys think of the episode of Beast Morphers? Let me know in the comments below. It is really starting to get better towards the end of season one. And once season one is over, I will do on my main day, Thursday, I will talk about kind of my overall feelings about Beast Morphers and where I think it's going and how I'm feeling about it overall. And if, if for any reason it would end up anywhere near my top 10 Power Ranger seasons. Probably not. It doesn't look hopeful yet, but we'll see. And I'll see you guys all on Thursday if you watch my regular content or on Monday if you guys watch just my Power Ranger content. Uh, my Power Ranger content does end up on Thursday sometimes, but mostly just on Mondays with my Beast Morphers episode reviews. So I'll see you guys all next time. Bye. Ugh. I forgot to take my nose spray before I left my parents' unit. So I have to go back up there and take my nose spray. Um, yeah. So there's that. That's a thing that's happened in my life lately. Oh, it's a good wine. I really like this wine. I don't like getting makeup on it, though. Ew. Ew. That's why I don't wear makeup ever. I just hate it.